Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about myself and a big conundrum I'm in. I'm 37. I've been married for six years and I don't have children. Yes, I'm a parenting coach and I am an earliest educator, but we've not been able to decide if we want children of our own. And that has been one of the biggest, uh, you know, discussions between me and my husband and the biggest question that has been haunting me for a couple of years now. So today we're going to talk about why you must have kids or rather I must have kids and what do we really want from our children. But before that, intro please. Hi there, you're listening to Spirituality Sideshow, where the weird meets the wonderful. Hit it. So Sheila, uh, you know, one of the big questions that always comes to me is that uh, why kids? Because there are a lot of parents who are opting out of having children, they take pick up, you know, they adopt dogs or pets that they like and they want to live a life without children. And I've also examined that option for a very long time, but off late because I'm working with children and I, uh, you know, talk to parents a lot and I wish, I realized that somewhere I feel that when a child comes into your life, you grow as well. So I want to see that growth in me as well. It's all uh, very good to have uh, children or say you know, children, but most of the time, like you're, like you're right, a lot of people are choosing not to have children and are living with a whole lot of judgment from the society. Because, um, you know, as you, and as women, we've all experienced it. The moment we're 21, the question is, when are you getting married? When are you getting married? There's no question about what, what are you planning to study? Where are you planning to work? What are your dreams? What is your purpose in life? Nothing of that. It's always when are you getting married? When are you getting married? When are you getting married? And when you get married, one of the questions that, that is being asked is when, when are you having babies? When are you having babies? You have your first baby, they ask you when are you having your second baby? And see, when I'm saying it, you know how annoying it is. Yes, and I have gone through it. I mean, being 37, it hasn't yeah. come easy. And how how annoying it is, and yet as a society, we believe it is our damn right to poke our nose in everyone else's life. Now the question that I ask most of the people who come to me for uh, coaching is, and when they when they come with, with questions like this, with doubts like this, like should I have a child? Could I have a child? When should I have a child? The question that I ask is very simple, and that is something that I've asked you yes. today. Yes. Why do you want to have a child? Why do you want to have a child? Not because your mother-in-law says you should have. Not because your mother says you've been married for six years and now you need to have a child. Not because the entire world asks you, when are you having your baby? Why do you want to have that baby? So I thought uh, a lot of answers for this question is like, you know, if you bring me and my husband closer or it will, doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Yes, yes. That's what I figured out eventually. Because there was a time when I just used to say, baby and my husband used to run away. <laughs> so clearly that option was not supposed to work out. Then I started thinking like it will feel a void in me. But uh, working, yes, exactly. Working with you, I realized that nobody else can fill a void. And I don't want my child to have that pressure of filling a void in me. Yeah. Right? That's a lot of pressure for a child to take. So eventually as I was, I got more into conscious parenting. Uh, as a coach, I did courses and all. I started to understand that the child will trigger you. The child will push you in various areas. And I want to grow with those prompts that a child gives. And I want to grow more as a person and experience a kind of unconditional love that you, that's very rare with a, a you know, a spouse or a sibling. Probably with a child, you just give your all, I feel. No, but again, the unconditional love, Gitika, comes only in the first few months of the child until the child starts speaking back to you. <laughs> I promise you that. You have to kids. You know, <laughs> as, uh, as a mother of two adult children now, sometimes you wonder why you taught them to speak. You. <laughs> you speak. <laughs> <Say it. laughs> Yeah, because um, it's very cute when the child says the first uh, first few words and the child is uh, talking gibberish and you know you may, and you see all those videos on YouTube and millions of views for a child. I'm like, shut up! What? I mean, 
సారీ అన్న బట్ సౌండ్ లైక్ అ బేబీ లెటర్ నాట్ అ బేబీ లెటర్ బట్ ద థింగ్ ఇస్ we we spend so much of our time watching kids say the most meaningless words because it is so cute and that is a baby's job because when a baby comes a baby is completely helpless it has to be fed it has to be watered it has to be taken care of and if the baby does not make sounds and does not appear cute you know to take care of the baby so nature has designed a baby to make loud noises mm. and <laughs> to look cute you know that hand chubby touching your cheek yes. oh boy you melt completely yeah. but that i'm saying that unconditional love for a parent also even though parents may deny it the unconditional love lasts for a few years after that the child starts growing up starts developing their own personality and that's when all these issues that you're talking about they start coming up right so what is really the answer to the question why one must have kids i don't know honestly i don't know yeah, yeah why would you have a you have a child because you really 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 want to have a child yeah uh, you believe that you have a legacy that you want to take forward take forward and yeah, the child yeah. can take that so that's a great pressure on the child mm. uh, you have a child because you want to love another person yeah. and you want to watch it grow and you want to watch that baby grow into a person that you really love to have been yourself correct correct and as the baby grows you learn with the baby but that's a very idealistic situation situation yeah so so that brings us to the next section of our uh, topic today is what do you want for your children and especially what do you want from your children so like halil gibral said that your children are not your children they are the children of life's longing for itself they come through you but not for you so that's the the sport in itself has so much meaning saying that parents are truly not the master of their children but mm-hmm. they can't control their children and that is so opposite to every possible thing in parenting that we have seen and gone through as a child ourselves and maybe parented our kids i have uh, seen this in my years of coaching and i've seen it sometimes uh, in mm-hmm. uh, in my social circles and sometimes i've done it where we expect a lot from the child now the child's responsibility is only to be a child mm. a child's responsibility is to be fed that's it okay the child has a right to be fed and looked after and we need to create that uh, environment, environment for them for the child to grow but yet so many parents use children as a dumping ground for their own dreams yeah, yeah. i couldn't become a singer my child has to become a singer i couldn't become a doctor you become a doctor i didn't have all this and so much of guilt tripping i didn't have all these opportunities i'm giving you these opportunities it is a huge pressure on the kids i'm uh, not saying that you don't guide your children but don't force them along a path because children intuitively know what they want yeah and yeah. that's where the a very important thing that i talk to parents always about is two things that you must do with your children for your children of course one is giving them the environment for them to feel safe and loved you cannot push your child into playing football because you wanted to be a football player of course if he chooses to if he becomes good at it push them but like like sheila also said don't push them into your options let them find their own options and then provide them the support love encouragement acceptance biggest word love might not be there but acceptance is so important yes. that just get, let them be themselves that they then do things that they like to do so that is one thing that you can do for your children the other thing that uh, we as parents do uh, is that uh, we expect the child to become our um, soulmate a uh-huh. friend take on our responsibility so many child uh, so many parents confide in their uh, children their problems and troubles it is not the child's job to look after you it is not the child's job to handle your troubles that is your job and then our children trigger us one of the biggest things that you have to see over there one of the biggest things that you have to learn over there is look within yourself why are you getting triggered, triggered. yeah instead of asking yeah. them to shut up and go to your room yes. 
think what they said and why did it bother you so much yeah. you know kids just say the dumbest things and they have no idea of how it relates to your past yeah. And you know, you're always the, thinking like you are the reason why I'm unhappy today because of you, Mama is so sad today. The, one of the things that I find very funny is that parents yell at their kids, just why are you getting angry? You shouldn't be getting angry. I mean, look at yourself. Uh -huh. you know, that's what happens. True, so, true. Uh, the thing is, uh, your kid has every right to express their emotion. You can correct them. You can guide them. And you can learn from them. You know, parents get so triggered <laughs> all over again when they believe that they have to learn from the child. What? I'm supposed to teach my child. What am I to learn from my child? That's true, exactly. But the point is the children, like for example, Sheila, we see now the children are so handy, hands-on with phones. They download an app and start playing games and engaging in things. And we are still struggling to put the password on and get the biometric. But uh, see, there's so much to learn from them in every sense that they are so much ahead of us. They come with a new ideology. They are a new generation. That's why you have that whole rainbow children and, you know, crystal children. Crystal children. These kids are so emotionally intelligent. These children are so smart that there is everything to learn from them. They give you answers such as, you know, that keep your mind okay. Sometimes kids ask you things like, why is that? Why don't we do that? Why did we do that? And it gets you thinking because you're not questioning anymore. In 35 years of your life, you've just gotten into that rut and used to a process. I've also noticed that uh, when kids come and they have this curious mind and uh, we as parents, Beat it out of them. Yes, yes. We really beat it out of them by saying, shut up, this is not what you ask. And then uh, throwing our views, our opinions. But that is true. We are actually the products of our parents' belief system. True. And unless we are really, truly aware mm -hmm. that this belief system is not something that is working for me, or even that this belief system could be a little different, we will never parent our kids differently. Absolutely, and we are, our children are not us. So you cannot treat them the way our parents treated them. Yes. And uh, that's why it becomes so important for people who are planning to have kids to be very, very clear of why they want to have kids. And the people who already have kids to be very, very clear on how they want to raise their kids. Because eventually you don't want it at the age of 18 or 20, your child goes to therapy and undoes all the impact that he, you've had on them. Just because you, he was trying to help you live their, uh, you know, your dream. That is just going to be very sad. Ultimately, you have to allow your child to grow. And the beautiful part is like Sheila was talking about babies. And I look at my niece and her nephew who are 14 and 19 respectively. And uh, Sheila, you know, it, my sister has raised them so beautifully with so much love and acceptance. And it's so beautiful to see such confident beings talk so nicely. But there is always a side where they have their own uh, thing where they become rude and they don't want to go into their shell. But that's also a part of who they are. And uh, the beauty is that my sister gives them space. So let them be who they are, but eventually you need you need to feel connected with your child and the child needs to feel safe with you. Instead of whenever they come to you, they should not feel that, okay, now I'm going to get some gyan, now I'm going to get some full-blown uh, lecture on how I should live my life and how another Sharmaji's beta is <laughs> taking over. Giving your child that space, love, acceptance is the most valuable thing you can do for your children and for yourself as well. So Gita, in conclusion, <laughs> why do you want to have a child? I want to get triggered. I want to grow as a person. I want to see a human being grow in front of me and I want to help them and myself build a space of love and acceptance. But somewhere I also felt in my life I lacked. So I long for it as well. Maybe I can build that uh, childhood again with my child. So for myself as well. On that note, here's Geetika. She's a beautiful parenting coach. She's very well aware of all the nuances of parenting. And she's growing and developing every single day. I've seen her grow in front of my eyes. And I'm very proud of what <laughs> she's become today. 
So any kind of parenting requirements, parenting needs, parenting doubts, parenting questions, contact Arjita Kamrik. Thank you, Sheila. Very kind words. And on that note, I hope we've given you some thoughts to think about as you're parenting. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye. And be sure to comment. If you disagree with us, write in the comment box and we will reply to everything that you say. Our job is not to get you to agree with us. Our job is just to give you a different perspective. So go ahead, disagree. We are willing to learn more. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye.